So you're a respiratory therapist for the day and you have the ER. That's all fine and dandy until a patient who is in some kind of respiratory distress comes through the ER doors and it's your job to fix them as the respiratory therapist. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get an ABG on this patient. Now sometimes you don't always have time to get an ABG depending on what the patient looks like. You may have to jump right to a ventilator or the BiPAP. However, if you do have time, I would get the ABG. So we get an ABG on a patient and then we look at it and this is the result. Okay, so it's bad. Um, they are acidotic. However, how acidotic are they? You can see that this one here is pretty bad. Um, however, it's not bad enough to intubate. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab the BiPAP and slap that mask on the patient's face because we want to try and blow off some of that CO2. The CO2 is high, therefore the pH is pretty acidotic and we don't want that. So we want to get a good minute ventilation, that way the patient is huffing and puffing and just blowing off that CO2. So generally what I like to do is I like to start at an IPAP of 10 and an EPAP of 5 just to give the patient a little bit of assistance. If I see the minute ventilation is generally still between 5 and 10, maybe if it's on the lower end, I will increase the IPAP. That way the patient is getting a higher uh, tidal volume. But at this point, they're kind of breathing fast already to compensate for it themselves. So 10 over 5 is perfectly fine. Now for the oxygen, I will generally start at 100% and then I will titrate it down, that way the patient um, has good saturations. As long as the sats are above 88%, that's okay. Now, I generally don't go below 40% unless it's a COPD error, and I don't want them at 100% because I don't want to knock out their, uh, or start their hypoxic drive and have them not breathe, because that's not good. So we slap the BiPAP on, and then what do we do next? So we will get a gas in about an hour and see if the BiPAP is working or not. So let's look at this gas here. This is our gas after an hour. Uh, what do you think? Well, to me it looks pretty good. So the pH is almost normal. The CO2 has definitely gone down, so the BiPAP is definitely working. I think we are trending in the right area. So what, what do we do from here? So we will leave the BiPAP on the patient probably for the next couple hours and then maybe we'll get a repeat gas then and see how they're doing. Maybe we'll take it off then, maybe we'll have to leave it on for the night. It all depends. So I've had this scenario plenty of times. Um, patient comes in, slap the BiPAP on and then I'll generally grab a gas or vice versa, whatever. Um, and then the BiPAP will do the trick. However, the BiPAP doesn't always do the trick. So let's say that we have that initial gas again, um, and then an hour later, what we do is we get another gas, but instead of improving, this is the gas now. So what, what do I do here? Um, so I have two options. I can go ahead and increase the IPAP and try and blow off more CO2, because obviously the settings I had on before were not working. Um, or if it's this bad, what I generally do is I go out and talk to the doctor and say, hey, I think it's a good idea to intubate. The BiPAP isn't working and the gas got worse. And then I'll show them the gas and they'll say, Austin, that's a good idea. Let's get in there and intubate. So then we do that because we want to take full control over the uh, ventilation of the patient. We want to make sure that we get all those values back to normal and then we'll go ahead and extubate them. Um, so intubating, I do have a whole video talking about that. Uh, I'll leave the link to that video in the description below. That's a good video. It's a long one, but it's a good one. I will have another video coming out eventually that talks about vent management, but for now, let's just stick to BiPAP. So um, basically with the BiPAP, you saw that we had two different outcomes with it. So when the patient gets worse, we will want to go to the ventilator. When they get better, we'll kind of leave it on for a little bit just to make sure that everything is going good and then we'll get a repeat gas and go from there. But what if we get this ABG here? Okay, is, is uh, the patient is in respiratory distress, but this is our ABG. So is a BiPAP going to fix this? <laughs> no. So this is a telltale sign of DKA for a type 1 diabetic 
or um, diabetic ketoacidosis. So this is a metabolic problem and the patient is breathing <sighs> like that because they're trying to compensate for that metabolic problem. They're trying to blow off their CO2 to, uh, to basically set off the metabolic problem, not because their CO2 is so high and their body is saying we need to get it low. Um, so this is not a case for you as a respiratory therapist. You will go ahead and basically just let the nurses do their things, give their drugs, help the patient out metabolically. If it is bad enough though, they will intubate the patient um, to take full control. However, I have seen it as low as 7.0 for a pH and they did not intubate. So um, it, it all depends on the situation. Every situation is different. So then let's look at this case. So a patient comes in in respiratory distress and we get an ABG and this is the result here. Okay, well that is normal, so what do we do? So even though sometimes the ABG is normal, what we do is we still throw the BiPAP on just to give them that assistance um, to help give their muscles a little bit of rest because they're gonna end up trending downhill. Um, let's see you breathe at a respiratory rate of 30 for a couple hours and let's see how you end up. Um, you're going to get tired and then you already know what's going to happen as a respiratory therapist. You've seen this play out time and time again. Patients will not come into the ER until they hit the wall and they absolutely need us. And that happens a lot and most times when that happens we need the ventilator right away. So in this case, ABG is good but the patient has some kind of stress. So what can we do to prevent the patient from getting on the ventilator? Well, let's slap the BiPAP on and give them a little bit of assistance. So many times um, by people will wear the BiPAP because they are in respiratory distress from several different things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a list of things here. You can pause the video and write those down. But overall, um, for the BiPAP, it is a lot more simpler than a ventilator. So with the BiPAP, we mainly only have IPAP and EPAP, as I said earlier. And then we can also manage the FiO2. So what we're doing really with the BiPAP is we are either going to use it to blow off CO2 or we're going to use it to uh, fix an oxygenation problem and give the patient some extra PEEP. Um, now, it all depends on the situation and how bad the things are going or getting if the patient needs to be intubated. So a lot of times, BiPAP does do the trick, but doesn't always do the trick, if that makes sense. It honestly all depends on the situation, on the ABG, and all the other lab values. Um, but clinically, look at your patient. Uh, do they look like they need to be intubated, or do you think a BiPAP is okay? You may not get this right away um, as a new respiratory therapist, but the more patients you see, the more respiratory distresses you see, you are going to figure this out a whole lot quicker in your head and it's gonna be so much easier. The best teacher is time and experience. So I can't tell you, oh, do this for this patient, do that for this patient. Um, honestly, you have to see the patient and you have to go from there. So I do have another video talking about ABGs as well. Um, I'll leave the link to that video in the description below because ABGs are not easy, especially starting out. Um, like I said, uh, time is the best teacher, time and experience. So the more ABGs you see, the better you're gonna get. I go over so much more detail in that video, so make sure you check that out. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and me or someone else will get back to you. 